This Very is cool. my first brain jam. I'm so excited. Yeah, well, welcome. Um, yeah, so good to have you here. I know we have new folks and we have returning folks, and I am equally excited about all of you being here. This is not necessarily our normal brain jam format in that our typical brain jams, we're kind of exploring a specific topic or a tool or a technology, and I'm kind of uh, taking more of the facilitator role. And today I'm I'm excited to learn from all of you. So I am really happy that we're doing this kind of potluck uh, share around because the idea came from at the end of our brain jams for people who were sticking around like past the two hour mark, people kept being like, can I just show you something I've been working on? And we were all like, yes, please, absolutely. And uh, and I was like, I wish everybody got to see this part. And, uh, and I think Zuska actually um, was the person who was like, we could do like a potluck and boom, this brain jam was born. So if you are somebody who is excited to share today, um, who, who is excited to share, or somebody who's like, I'm happy to share, but I, I'm also happy to not share, um, I'm going to have you sign up on our um, on a little sign-up form that I created. So I'm going to put it in the chat. And what you will see is this. When you get over there, I will just spotlight myself for a second so you can see. So welcome to our July Brain Jam Potluck and Playground. If you are excited to share, please go to page two and put your name and like a one sentence summary of what you are hoping to share. And when I say hoping, I mean, I'm hoping to get to six, maybe seven people in this first hour. If you're like, I'm happy to share, but I'm also happy not to share, then I'm putting you in the happy backups. And happy backups are on page three or four, and you can uh, you can sign up on there. And then we, hour two of the Brain Jam is going to be uh, something I'm calling the playground. And we are going to experiment and do slightly longer explorations. And we've got two folks who told me beforehand that they were up for leading our um, experiments and explorations in the, in the playground. We have room for probably one or two more. So if you're like, I have an experiment, I, I really wanna run, uh, then we can do that. You can sign up in the in the playground, um, but that is uh, that is just going to help us help me kind of move us through today. And uh, and I see people signing up, which is absolutely awesome. Um, as our kind of unofficial start, and I'm going to send this link again uh, for anybody who just joined. Um, as our kind of unofficial start, if you are not uh, or if you are done signing up. I am going to invite you to take the next two minutes to clean up your digital or kind of tidy up your digital space. Okay, so I've done this a couple of times and I gotta say, I find it really uh, lovely every time. So we spend a, like a lot of time, like I cleaned up my desk this morning and I was just like, yes, this was so like grounding and helpful. But I find that we spend so much time looking at our digital spaces and yet we don't tidy them up. So for the next two minutes, I'm going to invite you to clean up your desktop, take out the trash, close some tabs, or all of them. I call it tag, tab bankruptcy. Sometimes it's very satisfying. You just close them and you just hope for the best. So um, I'm just gonna give you two minutes to do that, to tidy up your workspace. I'll keep sharing uh, the link for people who are excited to join um, in the chat. But two minutes has started and I'm just gonna give you just the next 90 seconds to refresh your, your desktop. Okay. All right. Um, welcome everyone. Welcome Gil. Good to see you. Um, we are, I see we've got two people who are excited to share. We've got two people who are excited to be back up. So I'm hoping we can get, or I think we can get to everybody. I'm gonna have us do a bit of a warm up icebreaker that I learned from another card carrying facilitator, um, Jill Price, uh, the other day, and I thought it was a, a bunch of fun. So I'm gonna have us do it. In order to facilitate that, I'm gonna put us in breakout rooms in a moment. Um, and, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, hold on one moment, I need to set. Okay, Gil, if you can stay in this main room with me, then we will have the perfect number. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. When you get into your breakout rooms, I want you to briefly introduce yourself to the other person in the room. 
say where you're calling in from, type of facilitation that you do, and uh, and anything else you would like to share. And then you're going to take and and when that person is introducing themselves, I want you to like give them your full attention. And when you're done introducing yourselves, you're going to turn off your cameras and you're going to change three things about your environment. So that could be on you or that could be in your background. Okay. So you're going to do that in 30 seconds. Like after you're done introducing, you're going to be like, okay, let's go. Turn off your cameras, change three things, come back on. And then you're going to try to eagle eye. What are the three things that changed? Okay. Jacqueline, this is up to you. If you want to do it blurry, power to you. If you want to unblur when you get in there, uh, then you'll, you know, Angela might have to play on like expert level if you keep it on blur, but, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Okay. Any questions about the directions? Okay. So this is Eagle Eye. We're going to have five minutes total. So brief intros, 30 second change, and then spend at least two minutes trying to figure out what changed. All right. Okay. We're going to start five minutes. I'm going to open all the rooms and I'll see you all back here shortly. Welcome back. <laughs> awesome. So oh. much fun. <laughs> Looks like Zuska changed digitally, not just uh, nice, not just physically. <laughs> is it is it digital or is it physical? Um, just physical, unfortunately. That's Super amazing. Weird physical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So quick, we're going to do ASL celebration, um, for all of us on that one. Um, so quick question. So just the format for the brain jam is we're going to do like a five minute share up to a five minute share, and then up to five minutes of questions for about like what just got facilitated or what just got shared. So does, do, do any of you have questions for me about Eagle Eye? Yeah, Maria. I have a question. Um, I found it really hard to do both. So I'm wondering, like, is that a, a um, activity that's like better for people like that don't have ADHD or do have ADHD or like visual learners? Like, has there been any background on that? Because I, I, I was like, I can't focus on what my partner was saying, Zuska was saying when I was like looking at what's in their background. So what I would say is that the directions are a little bit imperfect and I decided to do them a little bit imperfectly to make them easier to do. What I would have liked to do is basically send you off, introduce yourselves, and then tell you what's about to happen so that you're not trying to do both, right? If I was facilitating this in person or if there was an easier way to communicate into the breakout rooms um, that I like knew would work for sure, then that's what I would have done rather than be like, here's what's about to happen. Because what ha what you how you were distracted is totally legit so the ideal I think like format and and Gil was saying that he's done this in person is the ideal format is to be like okay like chat with your partner you know like just two minutes and then uh you can even like do this back to you can do this like where you have people in lines and then they turn around and then it's change three things on your person and then flip back around and figure out what that is and so um so that I think would clear up what you were saying. Thank you. Yeah. I was like, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with you. There's only something just like slightly tricky about the technology. And I decided to go for the easy way rather than the like absolute best way to facilitate the directions. Got it. I really like the activity though. And I would like to find a way to use it in a way that would be uh, easier for participants. Cause I think it's cool. Yeah. Angela. I've actually used a variation on this because my primary audience is credit unions. And so they do robbery training every year and it's boring to do the same thing all the time. But one of the things that they're supposed to do is constantly have radar on antenna up. So if somebody comes in and then ends up robbing them, they need to take a mental picture of that person. So it's important that everybody they interact with, they have some kind of a mental picture of. So that's a way that I've used this um, IRL. And I have to say, 
that I feel really bad for Jacqueline because I had a really hard background. I could have changed 16 things. I have so much crap going on behind me. So anyway, it was super fun though. We loved it. Good. Yeah. Are there any other ways that people can think of debriefing this where they can like, it wouldn't just be a fun thing to do, but also a thing that they can, um, that they can like see setting the group up for success. Kind of like Angela was saying with the noticing. Yes, Stefano. No, no, I'm just thinking. <laughs> what are you thinking? My bad. I jumped on it. <laughs> I was thinking that if you if you want people to, like, one would be, like, to pay attention to the little details. Like, I want you to pay attention to, like, the words people use or the, like, the, the finer details of what we're getting into. That would be a way to just, like, kind of Um, talk about like really paying attention to the little things and the other thing I was thinking about is just like what what big things can actually go completely unnoticed like what are things that you might miss Uh, and that would be a way to just kind of like cue up the the sense that like sometimes somebody could change actually something really big about their background and you're like I I don't know because I wasn't paying close attention and so I was thinking about that connection of like wanting groups to pay close attention to each other as like a way to tune in um, right at the beginning. It's also a really good listening exercise because People tend to, like you were saying, Maria, you're paying so much attention to what they were saying, or in my mind, I was thinking about what were the three things I was going to change, and I wasn't paying attention at all to Jacqueline's background, because I was trying to listen to the words, so there was just a lot going on, so to try and keep listening at the forefront and taking in information at the same time you're planning is really difficult, so it's a great listening exercise, too. Nice. Awesome. Okay. All right. That's going to be me. Maybe we'll do a little round of applause. Yay. Okay. Wonderful. Um, So we have two folks who are excited to share uh, and maybe we'll kick it over to Angela to introduce virtual climber cards and before, and Zuska, you are on deck in the baseball terminology. So Angela, you have the floor. Okay, so I am going to send you a link uh, in the chat that you all can come with me. This is going to open up into a new window for you. And I'm also gonna share my screen. So if you've got two windows or two screens, fantastic. If you don't, you're gonna minimize your Zoom and make sure that the new window is maximized. So I'm gonna share so that you can see this along with me. This is, uh, it's a subscription deck. So I'm not trying to push anything, but I tell you, this has changed so much about my virtual facilitation. What this is, is a way for you to engage participants and talk about feelings before they start and after they're done without actually saying the icky feeling word. So this select a card that represents, hopefully you're seeing that. Then right under it, it says your experience with empathy to date. This is a session that I did with a credit union group on empathy. So you can change this prompt to anything you want. Then every person has over 50 cards that they're allowed to select from. And when you select a card, if I'm talking about empathy, um, let's choose this one, then I can put my name in there and then I can put a sentence or two about why I picked that card. Once I'm done then with that, as the facilitator, I click on show responses and these are all the people that responded and what they said. So normally I give people 60 seconds to pick a card and come up with a response. And then I show them the cards afterwards. I show this, the, um, um, the back sides of the cards, okay? And I don't read all of them. There's way too many to read all of them, but I might pick out one or two and say, yes, I love the bicycle puja because it's empathy is an ongoing process or just you know picking out a couple. 
So I start the session this way because it's a good way in an hour long webinar session to be able to see where people are, what their experience is, and get them to unveil a little bit about what's intimidating to them. Then I have a second prompt. And this is a goal you have for empathizing in the future. And I use this a lot at the end of whatever the session is, a goal that you have for coaching, a goal that you have for whatever my session was about. And the same cards come up, but now I can pick the same card. I can pick something completely different. I can pick the blank card and make it whatever I want it to be. So hopefully somebody picks something like, um, this one. And I'm going to say that my goal for empathizing is to keep it positive and to recognize positive empathy experiences or opportunities. And then you show the responses again, and you can see how people have moved from one to the next. So that is uh, virtual climber cards. I can show you the back end to it as well if you want. Um, but it's just changed so much about how I facilitate because it gives me that bookend that sort of the how are you feeling and now what's your goal at the end of the session. So I will stop my share. Yay. Thanks, Angela. Yeah. What questions do folks have for Angela on digital climate cards? Okay, now I see Stefano. Yeah. No, still no. Dang. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Maria, I see you. Um, first of all, this is fantastic. I absolutely love this. And with the group that I work with most often, this is going to be amazing. So uh, a couple of questions would be, um, is there like, like I use Mentimeter, but they have like, you can use up to two slides before you have to pay. Is there like a before you have to pay option? There is a 30 day trial. And then it's $5 a month, which I found to be really, really reasonable for how often I use this thing. Um, with the $5 a month, you can only have one session open at a time. So all you have to do is archive a session so I can get my sessions all set up for a month or for a week or, you know, however frequently I'm going to be using them with my before and after prompts or however many prompts I want to use. I could come back to these multiple times. Um, you archive them, you could reactivate them at any time. So with, there's a $10 subscription, which for some reason in my brain, $10 was like so hefty of a buy-in. But with the $10 subscription, she's got different card decks. So she's got like a technology card deck and she's got um, some that are specific to audiences. And you can also upload your own cards. So if you've got um, emotions. Hey, yes. Angela, sorry, I just saw Liz. Uh, I just saw Liz's question. And I was wondering if we could throw it in there because maybe it will it will spark more on the on what you were about to get into. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's related to this. Like, is there a way for multiple people on a team to share a subscription? If you know, um, there's not, and I've begged her to do that. <laughs> um, this started from there's actually a physical deck of climber cards, and the the person who designed them is her name is Amy Climber. She um, started off in like the experiential learning. Um, category. So, and she's also an artist. So one side of the card has the images and there's the same images that you would see. The other side has like numbers and shapes. So you can tell people to pick a card and have all of the, the pentagons get together or all the red get together or all the ones get together. And you can see that even though these are both ones, one is a blue circle and one is a yellow triangle. So like your mind just explodes with how many ways you could use these. Um, I have only used the images though, and I'm in love with the images, so. I don't know if, um... I don't, maybe you know this or you use this hack in other places, Liz, but sometimes I'll create like an email address that I'm just like, this is just all of us are going to use that same login that, and it's not like my email address and my, you know, set of passwords. It's like a team email address. Um, so that's like a, a little workaround for programs that don't have that shared feature that I've definitely used before. Got no time for one more question. If folks have another question. Yeah, Robin. 
This isn't really a question. It's just like a hooray because I am a huge Climber Cards fan. I do have the $10 a month thing. And oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was wondering if, do y'all want to see the, the technology ones? I can, um, I can share. With that. It's technology and emotions, right? Isn't that what you get? It's people and tech. People and tech. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Please share. But it like, it makes it so I have to, the one, there's one thing about this, which is like, um, if you're not signed in, yeah, then, and it signs you out, like really. <laughs> Do you, we could come back to you, Robin. We could like, uh, we could jump to Zuska as like the next person up and then we could come back and do a encore of Glimmer cards afterward. So you can be queued good. up. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. You too. Um, thanks Angela for introducing us to Climber cards. Um, that's really awesome. Yay. Um, Ooh. I'm sure Amy Climber will be stoked on the shout out and I can't wait to share this with her. Uh, all right, Zuska. Tell us about what you are sharing today. So there were two things I was going to share. Um, and I feel like I have to say something about my face, but you understand we all went through the same experience at the beginning. So um, now I've said it. The, <laughs> so the, the first thing that I was going to share is in the certificate and dialogue and civic engagement um, that I did a few years ago, I heard this story from one of our instructors where she had been leading um, an engagement. I think that was like a cross Canada engagement. And one of the things that her team did um, was that they got, I believe it was the UN, like a UN body to say that they would take as an input um, what, the, what their engagement came up with. And I like that to me was just, because in civic engagement, sometimes like people are just kind of brought together and like you talk about something and it's not necessarily clear what will come out of it. Um, I, I just like really appreciated that like connection to impact for the participants and as a way to like really motivate um, what, you know, what you're, you're doing in the room together. Um, and so it kind of tipped me off to when I'm setting something up to go like, where is this going to, you know, like, where are we going to, plug it in and is there actually like another group of people that we can sign up to say we're going to take what you're doing as an input because I think that can be really powerful and so I was going to just share that I feel like some of you who are more on like the consulting end are like yeah 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 we totally do that which I believe <laughs> and then for some of us who are like more of like I facilitate the thing I think that that can be helpful um and so I wanted to share that and then the other thing I wanted to share, uh, which is something I, I'd seen another facilitator do. Can, um, I, can oh, we yeah. maybe do questions on that first one, Zuska, and then we can do okay. questions on the second? Yes. So that idea that Zuska was talking about of like doing something with, or having a group take the output of your workshop and as an input, anybody have questions on that concept? I can see a very pondering faces. So I don't feel like this is dead air. I feel like this is very thoughtful air. And so that's why I'm letting it go for a moment. Can you repeat your question one more time so we can ponder it some more? Yeah, the question is the, the concept that Zuska just introduced of like before you run, and let me know if I'm summarizing this correctly, Zuska, or, or no, let's, let's have you summarize it. I don't, I don't need to, <laughs> to attempt, but like have you summarize kind of what, what the takeaway for you was, was and then, the question would be what what do you think of that idea yeah so basically just that like if you can get a another group of people that have some authority to do something potentially to say that they will take as an input the outputs of your engagement or facilitation um it can be a really powerful way of motivating that um that event basically Do you think that that only applies when you're facilitating something around a decision? Or do you think you can do that if you're like facilitating around a skill or a 
like if you're like i'm helping these people better understand empathy or understand how to facilitate or how to be better leaders like versus we're making a decision about you know the future of work at our company so um when you when you started the sentence my immediate thought was like oh, or could you do it around like something like just how people are feeling about something and so i'm going to answer that one first cuz this was in my head first um but yeah i think in this engagement i don't think they were necessarily coming to a decision but they were um laying out you know like what is the public sentiment around this thing right which then this body was going to take in and be like this is the public sentiment about this thing um and so they weren't necessarily coming to a decision in the facilitation that might have come later right after maybe other other input streams um but in terms of skills I think, um, is it something that you can do? I guess it depends on like what the body is. Like if it is kind of maybe like a training organization or something, and like you want to learn something about like, how are people taking these skills up? What skills do people need? I think there are still um, ways to, yeah, to motivate, to motivate that by um, connecting it to like who might use it potentially. So, mm -hmm. and this is, she has something that was similar as an example in, in chat. Yeah, it is, if it's helpful. Um, so I kind of wear a couple hats at my organization. I'm on the admin team that does a lot of the decision-making in power, but I'm also a facilitator. And so I have these facilitator-wide like team meetings that can look a lot of different ways. Um, and then one day I just shared a reading and like, it was basically like book club. And we were like highlighting passages together and we were like, oh my gosh, like we could be changing our facilitation this way or we could use this kind of support. And so the end of the meeting, I was like, let's come up with like two to three proposals that you want me to bring back to the admin staff at the next staff meeting. And like, you know, I'm, I'm giving you my word that we're gonna find a way to, to find, find a way to sign off on it and make these things reality. So that's kind of how this, book club turned into that organically. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for sharing this. That's awesome. Uh, all right, Zuska, what was your second second share? Um, the other one was kind of like a, a more fun thing potentially, but useful. And uh, so what I'd seen a facilitator do was, um, <laughs> and this was in person, but I think you can do it vir virtually when people are in their environments. Um, but in, in order to get people to like get off of their phones, cause he was training like people who were kind of in their early twenties um, and mid twenties, he <laughs> suggested, uh, he actually brought in these like little velvet bags and uh, in on each of the tables, he would have like enough for each person uh, to put their phone into like this little bag. And it was called the phone spa. <laughs> and you wouldn't, you wouldn't interrupt your phone while it was in the spa. And so like, I really, I really love that idea. And I just like love putting my phone in the phone spa and being like, oh, can you take a little break? You know, I'm not gonna interrupt you. you know? I love that. And so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so like, even right now, you know, like I could make a phone spa out of this or whatever, you know, you have around you. So if you like have, if you're in a physical environment and you have some piece of like cloth or a little box or whatever, yeah. <laughs> yes. Does anyone have ideas of what kind of phone spa they would make in their own environment right now? Like if we asked you to find a phone spa? I'm in my bedroom, so I'd put mine on my pillow with my char and charge it. <laughs> and charge it. <laughs> I he and I I know that Mike would suggest like put it inside the pillowcase so you don't see it yeah <laughs> yeah or you could tuck it, it in I tuck it in you tuck it in yeah <laughs> maybe put some cucumbers on its eyes no, <laughs> send your phone to lunch yeah <laughs> I meant slices you know <laughs> I what I love about that idea is that it like completely it it reframes like don't use your phone to like your phone is resting like you wouldn't interrupt someone who's resting and you're like I wouldn't and they're like exactly and it just like changes the tone 
of mm. why, right? Uh, of why you're doing something. And I think that's just such a, a cool invitation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, opportunity. So if you made up like little like phone spa, like little boxes or something, and you had like your name and logo and like phone spa, and then your participants could take it home with them. And so then when they need like focus time, remember to put your phones in your phone spa, like remember your phone needs phone spa time, you know, and like to encourage that behavior voluntarily throughout their week. I like that. That's mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> That's a fun, um, I feel like sometimes people are like, what can I like give away at this conference that other people aren't get like giving away? Little phone spas. Marketing tip. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right, Robin, are you ready for the encore? And we'll do five minutes. Max, it doesn't have to be five minutes. Don't feel like you have to stretch it, but you're welcome to take five minutes to, to encore the climber cards. Yeah. Um, and this is just so you can see like the other, there's a couple other options. And if you are a total facilitation card nerd like me, which is more of the cards that you use with your participants, not um, Meg using facilitation cards. Um, these are, uh, they also have Chad Littlefield's um, We Connect cards on Climber cards as well. I haven't found a great way to use them there yet, but same thing um, that Angela so beautifully explained earlier. So, um, but I'll invite you all to, I made up sort of a special one just for right now. So um, my question at the top is, how do you feel about climber cards? Um, and so go down and kind of see what all the images are and something that um, inspires you to say, like, how do you feel about these cards? Robin, mm -hmm. would you mind sharing your screen so it'll be captured on the video? Sure. Yeah, one second. Something just happened. Oh no, I can also do it. Oops. My computer decided to tell me about some updates right now. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, so you can show the cards and the, how do you feel about climber cards is up here and you can uh, scroll down and see all these options. So I'm gonna choose these elephant butts um, and say that, you know, it's about like being together is fun. Um, and then create my response. And once I create my response, I can see all of your responses as well as a participant. Um, so I can be both the holder of the cards and a participant in it. I love Gil's like, ooh, cool. <laughs> oh, descriptive. Yeah, so you also, once you uh, fill out your own, then you can see everybody's responses on your own screen. Um, and not just on, on my own screen. Yeah, and what's cool, you can see, right? So you have Gil who's like, oh, cool. But then you have Maria who's really thinking about it and, and writing a lot about it. So, you know, we're all learning together and take us to new places. I love it. So it's a really awesome opportunity to give people the right kind of processing space for who they are and um, what they need. Um, and if you want to, super quick, since you said I have five minutes max, but I've only taken three, maybe mm -hmm. two more minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to exit this session. So you won't be able to do anything else in there right now. Um, but I'll show you the one other one, which um, kind of like Angela said, um, I find it really helpful to give people emotional language. So click through to this one and she has cards that are just um, emotions. So bop on in there. This is like just a Amy Clymer promo. Did you know that that's what you were doing today, Meg? No, I really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also funny because I live in the same town and we end up like at all the same, like I'm buddies with Amy and it's, it's pretty fun to like also be a huge fan. 
That's how I got to know her because I live in Ma the Madison area. So she moved from Madison down to you. So you took her away from her. No, you didn't. Ah. Now it's not just a promo. It's a love fest. It like, is. We have, we have gone full love fest. Um, oh, love fest. Wait, Madison, Wisconsin? Yes. Okay. Um, so you can see for the video all these different amazing. And I just asked you to think about how are you feeling right now? Mm. I am going to say I feel because it's fun to nerd out. Um, and then I create my response and I can see what all of your responses are. Ooh, see, and this is a great way to debrief as well. Just how are you feeling when you're leaving a session or whatever, whatever. So I'm going to stop sharing, but um, I'll leave the jam open and y'all can fill in as many until it signs me out automatically, which is <laughs> great. Thank you, Robin. Um, Jacqueline, you had said, and let's do a quick, uh, quick applause, both for Robin and Zuska. I don't know if we got an ending applause for you, so. That's, that was for you as well. Um, Jacqueline, you said you were up for sharing. Uh, and it, are you still up for sharing? I, I am. I'll share. Um, it's not very prepared, so apologies for that. But um, that. something we do on our team a lot, it, we, ha we facilitate a lot of discussions. So um, we're never really the expert. We always say we're not the expert in the room. We just try to get them talking uh, to, to share practices and learn from each other. And so uh, one thing we do a lot, and we cannot take credit for this. This is not what we've done. I think Pro Inspire had put it out, um, a company few of our uh, team members have done trainings for. Um, they uh, you know, provided us with this outline called a peer circle. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with it. Uh, it seems like I see a few nods, but it's basically a very structured process for um, helping an individual or a team member. Uh, basically come up with a solution to a problem. Um, so there are, and I'm gonna try to figure out a way to copy and paste this because it's from Word document. Oh, actually, I guess I can share my screen. So you have, you have to, you should have a facilitator. So in this case, it would be me. And then we would just prime you guys before you came. So let's say I said to Meg, come with a, a problem that you're looking to have solved. And so then um, you would have that one person, the presenter, describe their challenge, what they've done so far, um, like to solve that problem. And then you would give them five minutes and they'd share all the details out. Then you'd have uh, eight minutes for about a clarification point. So that's where everybody else here would just like ask all the questions. Maybe you need to understand the situation a little bit more, find out a little bit more what the person is really looking for. And then you do what we call the duct tape or the mute. So uh, if it was, let's say I was, I was the person giving my problem, I'd put duct tape over my mouth and I'm not allowed to say or do anything. And everybody else in the group would actually discuss together, like uh, maybe sol possible solutions, uh, what's like the real issue, what action steps, and you'd kind of feed off of each other on like, maybe somebody has a great idea, somebody else has another idea, whereas I'm not allowed to say anything. And then the ending four minutes, basically after taking all of that in, I would just repeat back what I'm basically going to take as my next steps. So it would be you guys helping me come up with that uh, those decisions. So that is the peer circle model. Apologies if you guys have already heard of that. Um, and then along with that kind of facilitated discussion, something I just learned about yesterday that I think is pretty cool. I'll put this uh, link in the chat box. Um, called going horizontal. Not sure if anyone's heard of that, but we, um, I believe it is a company from Canada, from Quebec, I believe. And, and it's basically these um, kind of storytelling cards. And so um, they have a bunch of free webinars and you can join to learn how to use the cards. Um, but basically, in a group like this, you would have one person be the storyteller, and everybody else would be listening, and you'd be listening from a specific lens. So if I was to share a story or a problem I'm having, and again, that would be based on a theme that it tells me to share, um, you would all be listening and then mirror 
what you heard, but through a particular lens. And what I learned from these cards yesterday was uh, sometimes when you listen to a story, you automatically want to give feedback and you're not listening to the full story. Um, and through listening through the lens, you have to actually think a little bit more and mirroring gives that person feedback even in just such a nicer way um, because it really gets to some of the things that you didn't even know you said as a storyteller. That's really it. Yay. Thanks, Jacqueline. Yay. <laughs> um, that last piece that you said about the like listening so that you can mirror back I was like there is a facilitator card about this um, and it's called echoed dialogue um, and I use this one um, in in when you want like I want you to pay very close attention to what this person is saying and not try to do anything else uh, that's when that process is, is really, really useful. When people aren't listening to each other, you're like, you're going to have to repeat back word for word what that person is saying. It's a really like, uh, uh, yeah, like energetic way to, to make sure that happens. So I love that um, insight. I had that connection. Uh, questions for Jacqueline on either of those shares. Yeah, see you I actually just wanted to say for the first one, that's something I'd seen before. And in, in that certificate that I did, we did once. And it's honestly something I've been looking for. Like I've been looking for the instructions for that um, since. So I'm super glad that you brought it up because uh, to just say as like someone who's gone through it, it, it was, it's really revolutionary. Like to not, I'd like even for, um, for the people who are, I know for me, like, to be kind of like in the center where where you're the person who's like going to have their problem out to be given like those like five minutes where you have to be clear like you think through okay where are they going to get it like where are they going to go off like or like get it wrong like what do I have to say what shouldn't I say um and that itself can be like really helpful like even like that like that five minute prep um yeah, yeah and I I found it really incredible so I highly encourage you to try Jacqueline's <laughs> suggestion. Yeah, I'm interested in the peer circles as well. Like there's a part of me that's really attracted to that idea and also terrified that it could end up with a lot of hurt feelings. Um, and I, I'm just curious about like what, what in terms of maybe community agreements help support a process like this or what kind of communities are, does this serve best? Yeah, that, that's a great question. When we've done them, uh... We've done, we haven't done them for like our office. So an environment where you're with these people all the time. We've done them a lot with, uh, for example, our fellows program where we've had them from different camps across the, across the world. They come together and they physically have these uh, and then sometimes virtually have these uh, peer circles. So I think in terms of state that they have in it, uh, I don't think anyone's ever walked out with hurt feelings mostly because nothing has ever like they're not impacted it by it, but if a community, I think having those community agreements, like for our fellows program, they have those from the beginning. So it kind of, they bring it with it throughout everything they do. So definitely agree that there needs to be something when you're setting this up. You can also set it up based on uh, like some kinds of problems that you want to address, because I imagine if, if it's maybe a work conflict or if I'm having a conflict with somebody on my team and I'm in a peer circle with somebody from another team, there also needs to be that understanding that what is said in the circle stays in the circle. Otherwise you can get people to not be honest about what is going on. Another thought I had, Liz, is, is the, the opting in nature of it. If it's like you're putting yourself into the middle rather than like you're required to, to me, that always changes the dynamic versus like you are your turn to be in the circle versus like who wants to be and who is coming with a problem. And I think when you're saying like, I know I have this problem, what advice do you have? The feedback it, it's so different to ask for feedback than when people are like, can I just give you some feedback? Like th that is energetically like so different. So I do think that also tends to help when people are inviting the feedback and are also presenting the problem. Like that amount of agency, I think also helps the, um, the feeling. We've also talked um, about modifying the model and like me stepping in the circle and 
doing a problem that I know other people are facing, but nobody knows I'm facing it. So that uh, you're kind of like sparking the conversation without putting anybody on the spot. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> There's, um, I don't, I don't know if people have heard of liberating structures, um, but if you haven't, it's a website, uh, well, it's a thing worth checking out. The website is, is kind of the avenue to get into there. I often think of liberating structures as macro structures and like facilitator cards would be the micro version of some things where you kind of like attach a bunch of them together if that's how you wanna think about it. Like this process that Jacqueline that you introduced us to has like six different steps, right? And each one of those to me could be its own facilitator card but it's a whole process. But there's a, like the peer circle if you're if you're interested in that, there's a really similar liberating structure called Wise Crowds, um, and I just share that because it's it's written up in a different way. So um, you might be curious about checking that one out as well. I I cut someone off though right before I and somebody was going to share something. I was just going to say too that Liz, I had the same um, the same fear going into it, especially because there was there was like that part where you're like, and then you're not going to talk, and people are going to talk about you, <laughs> and I was like. I can't be good. And I was actually really surprised that like, and maybe it's because Canadians are so nice. I don't know. But like the, <laughs> like it was in a Canadian school, but the, um, I think part of it was because everyone was going to have a turn. Maybe like everyone was just like, well, I'm not going to like be mean to someone. And I think because it's like, so like solutions focused, it's like, you're trying to help that person that it was really neat, like to hear like three people in in my case, like talk about the thing um, and to have the freedom to like not have to check in with me emotionally. It was it, uh, while actually still being kind. And I was I was surprised that um, that there didn't need to like there wasn't a lot that was said in terms of like setting up a structure. It was just kind of like human beings are kind of nice sometimes, you know, like and um, yeah. So I think like you you will know your group and <laughs> potentially like what ground rules you want to set but um yeah it seems like we've got like a natural ability to also just like get it right with, with those uh sometimes um so uh the uh word doc or the um your circle model is that something that you can uh, share as a link from like a Dropbox or PDF or Google Drive or something like that because that was that made it real easy the table yeah I, I definitely think we can share it um, uh, should I do it through a Dropbox or Meg do you think I should send it to you if you send it to me, I can send it out. There is a way to upload a file into the chat. So if you want to oh. try that, you can do that. Um, and if you are like, it's not working, then we'll just send it out via email um, afterward. So we have about five minutes left in our last, in our, in our first hour. And I wanted to ask, does anybody, so other than climber cards, because we saw how they work and I'm not, I'm not trying, like, they were awesome, but I just wanted to know to see if we could get another uh, another example. Does anybody have a favorite wrap up that they like doing with folks, or a way that they often like closing a space? I'm putting you all 100% on the spot, um, but I thought I would throw it out there and see like, does anybody have a wrap up that they would uh, that they could invite us to do to close out our next five minutes? Yeah, Robin. Um. A uh, rock stick leaf. Uh, is anyone familiar with? <laughs> so um, you can share something that rocked or something that will stick with you or something you want to leave behind. <laughs> yes, awesome. Okay, when uh, I would love if we could just go around and do rock stick le or leaf. And uh, when you unmute, we'll know that you want to share. So if you're up for it, just unmute and start, start talking. The going horizontal resource is going to stick with me. I'm really excited to explore that. So thank you.
since this was my first jam, I just want to give a shout out to Meg for your amazing facilitation skills. You model everything so beautifully and it's going to stick with me. Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> I, yeah, the cards that you guys uh, showed before, I, I actually forgot about Chad Littlefield's cards and we have those in the office. And I was like, I can't believe I totally just forgot we even had that tool. So now knowing that it's virtual, it's definitely going to stick with me. Um, I think the vibes and the energy rock, like, Y'all are just really cool, interesting people, and happy to be here for my first jam. Yeah, plus plus one on that. You all rock, and I love what what really stuck with me was the uh, these cards. I'm I'm really thinking of how I can use them. The the clamor cards. I'm excited. So think, thanks for sharing that. Just all the resources in general. They all they all rock. I love like making my adding them to my little collection. <laughs> Yeah. I can, uh, oh, I was going to say I can second a stick for the climber cards. Uh, I use metaphor cards like that all the time. And I, some of my co-facilitators do as well. And I think they've been missing that since we've gone virtual. So this is super exciting to learn about that resource. So. Uh, for me, what rocked was the community of other facilitators, like just being in this space with other people that get it, you know, from our perspective, uh, what's going to stick with me is uh, the links. I'm like going to copy the chat and just research everything because um, I'm really excited to learn more about all of the resources that were shared. And I don't fully understand the leave one, but if I could leave something with you, is that, can I do that? Okay. Um, and I've shared this before, but not everybody may have heard it. But one thing that, because I do virtual sessions, one thing that I do um, is I change when people come in, I change their name because we use Zoom, so hosts can change names, and I add a number. It's just a random number. We always, in our groups, the youth speak first and most, so the youth get the first numbers, like zero to, you know, like we start with two because we always ask for a volunteer for one, so then two, three, four. So whenever we're doing something where the whole group has to share one at a time, we'll ask for the volunteer for one, and then whoever is facilitating, usually it's one of the young people because that's what we train them to do, they'll call on the next person who is number two, the next person who is number three, the next person who is number four. <clears throat> and what's nice about that is it keeps the flow going and it also lets the people know like when their turn is next. So like they can be prepared to share, which helps a lot of people that might be hesitant to share and they're like, I don't know who's next and, and all that. So that's what I will leave with you. <laughs> and I will leave this lipstick mustache. Um, except I except I won't because this is going on YouTube, so it will stick. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. I will say that I, for a very long time, have just wanted to geek out with people on facilitation, and like that has just always been one of the driving forces in in making things and is bringing people together to do that. And so. Um, I, I'm so happy to get to experience that. And I'm also so happy that other people are happy to experience that. Like that is just a compersive circle of joy. So um, compersive is being happy for other people's happiness. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just happy because everybody else is happy and I'm also happy for my own happiness. Um, so, okay, we're gonna close the love fest there. If you are sticking around for the second hour, Awesome. If you have to go, bye. Okay, it happened. It happened too fast. Um, uh, okay, so if you're sticking around for the second hour, I'm gonna have us do like a two minute break. So like water, stretch, just don't stare at a screen for two minutes. Go ahead and turn off your camera, do something else, and we'll come back in two minutes and then we'll move into part two. <laughs> okay, come on back, everyone. 
you heard me kind of weird, awkward laughing, it's because my camera seems to be frozen or super lagging. Um, oh yeah, it really, really is. Okay, I'm gonna keep that off for a second while I figure it out. Can you hear me okay? I can see Robin and Maria, so can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay, awesome. So just the just the seeing part that is struggle busing. See if it's any better. Nope, that's me from 10 minutes ago. So I don't know what's <laughs> happening there. This is very Twilight Zony. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna try something else. Um, we'll switch to a different camera setup here. Um, okay, so if folks can hear me, come on back. I also love that I like learned things about you all during the break. Cause I'm like, Liz does theater of the oppressed work. I got questions. Um, so maybe we can get into that later. Okay, here we go. Let's try this one. Uh, yes. All right. Whew. Um, okay. So welcome to the playground. So the playground today, um, is named because we are gonna we're gonna play as facilitators and we're going to kind of try things out. So Robin is going to lead us in an experiment, which she has not facilitated before because it's hard to facilitate experiments because you need people to experiment with. Um, so Robin's gonna lead us in an experimentation and then Gil is going to uh, have us explore a gather space that he built. And so if you've never been in gather before, you are gonna get to experience that, um, which is gonna be a lot of fun. I think my thought is to start with Robin and then move to Gil because we might actually just finish out in the gather space unless people wanna come back. Um, so, yeah, and is iPhone one of you folks or is that somebody else? Okay, cool. So uh, somebody, <laughs> I was wondering if somebody was using the iPhone as their audio. So if anyone is logged in on iPhone, know that Gather doesn't work on phones or rather it is hyper glitchy on phones. So if you do wanna join us in the Gather space, it will be important for you to be on a computer and for us to use Chrome or Firefox, I think, not Safari. Um, Chrome is the best, uh, not like objectively, but for a gather. Um, okay, I am going to say that our intention here is just to have fun with other facilitators, getting to keep geeking out, and, uh, and for Robin to get to experiment with so many willing and wonderful people. So Robin, I'm gonna turn it over to you and you can tell us about what we're experimenting with today. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, and I'm curious if this will work for who is on the iPhone as well. Um, so really what I am wanting to experiment with is just a fishbowl experiment. And I know that um, some folks have done fishbowls with Zoom and then, um, is anyone, maybe I should just explain fishbowl. Is, it, is everyone familiar? Does anybody else want to explain fishbowl? Is, so how I know it is usually when there's like an inner circle and maybe an outer circle and like one group talks and the other one observes and you can change it up but like maybe one group gets to ask the other one questions at some point if they want to yeah oh beautiful you did it better than I would Thanks, yeah. so um yeah essentially if we were in a physical space we would have concentric circles we'd have an inner circle of where you're if you're in the inner circle you would speak to the question or the problem or the opinion. And whenever you're done kind of sharing, then you step out of the inner circle to be an observer. Um, and yeah, depending on how we wanted to facilitate it, the outer circle could pose questions, et cetera. Um, I, one of my favorite things in the switching from tangible physical space into virtual space was trying to experience physical space together in a virtual setting. So it's kind of cool because it'll be a different way to do this. And then we're going to jump into gather, which will be a whole different way to do that. So um, I am, I have not facilitated this, but I actually was a participant in this like way back. Um, I want to say like, April or May 2020, I was a part of, I went to like an emergent strategy um, 
uh, online sharing space and they shared this template. Um, so earlier today, actually, Meg and I met up. So you can ignore all the slides except for slide two. Well, and boy, <laughs> Meg, I just added the slide into the space that you and I were at earlier. Perfect. Um, and I will share my screen with you in a second, um, but if you wanna just kind of everyone get in there. So I'm noticing, let's see, we have one, two, three, four folks who've entered. So if anyone is having trouble, just let me know. And I can share the screen so that the recording can see, wait, are we recording? Yeah, so the recording can see what's happening here. Um, so, if you want to, what we'll do is I'll invite you each to find a cozy seat in the living room. I wish I could take credit for making this space. You can sit over on this pile of pillows. You could sit on a yoga ball. You could choose a couch. And so find a space that you wanna sit in the room and then put your name into one of those blocks. So the way to do that is, whoop, don't go to that slide. Yeah, perfect. So a couple of you say, I might, I'm gonna sit on, I'm gonna be on this yoga mat here. Oh, there you go. That's what it is, a yoga mat, I think. So I'm just gonna sit there. So the quest, I thought of sort of a question to bring and I'm open to variations of this, but I just, I think I'm with you all in the fact that it is just such a sweet, fun place to be with other facilitators who are ready to geek out about facilitation. And the question that I've been kind of pondering for this discussion is, um, what, what do you think the power of facilitation can do to change the world? Like, how do, how do you think we can leverage the power of facilitation to change the world? And I do want it to be sort of that open-ended because people are going to have some really cool things to say, I think. So the way to, to say, okay, I'm ready to speak is to move yourself into one of these four center uh, chairs. All right, so Meg is ready to speak. I'm actually only speaking right now because I wanted to get the conversation started and I'm gonna write that question in the chat, but let's say, okay, so we have Meg and Maria in the middle. I'm gonna back out and just turn the floor over to Meg and Maria to have this conversation. Do you want me to keep sharing my screen? I kind of wanna see people's faces for a conversation. Yeah, I think I think it'd be cool to to see if it works without you sharing and us just having it on the other screen. Yeah. Probably a little more difficult for people with one one monitor or a small computer. Anyway, uh, how can facilitation be leveraged to change the world? I think that I think that we in order to change the world, I think we have to have really uh, we have to have conversations we're not having. And for some people, those might feel daunting or scary or intimidating. And to me, the like simplest thing that facilitation is, is to make things easier, is to make the process of whatever we're doing easier. And so to me, like my, one of my favorite things as a facilitator is having people be like, this is going to be terrifying and scary. And it actually turns out not, they're like, that was kind of fun you know like when people say fun like they are surprised by it like that's you know like that's my favorite one of my favorite testimonials so they're like that was actually like really fun or like that was really enlivening or or enriching or I thought about things I hadn't thought about before and I'm not intimidated or scared by those thoughts and I feel like facilitators can play a huge role in allowing that to happen and also then holding the right type of space for that to like continue to happen. Um, I don't think we're taught a lot of like human to human skills. And to me, some of our jobs as facilitators is just to create 
like to set people up for success and then show them what success feels like so that they can refer to it later. Like they're like, I've had a conversation like this. It went well. I can do that again to create those like sandboxes. I could keep going, but I'm definitely going to stop now. Does, should I go? Is it my turn to go or is there an, an, another? Aspect? Yeah, I would say as long as you are in the middle, then you're free to talk. And if you want to, I'm sorry, you know what I didn't do is I started talking without moving myself into the middle here. So if I'm in the middle, then you can talk. And if you're not in the middle, then keep stay muted. Okay, cool. Well, I'll keep talking until someone else pops into the middle. <laughs> Um, I completely agree with what Meg said. Um, that's actually, as a facilitator, that's my job. Um, that's what I do is to facilitate these conversations and get people to talk about things that they're not talking about but need to be talked about, whether that's on a personal level or a societal level, such as racism and things like that. Um, so I love that, you know, as a facilitator, I can help to create these safe spaces for people to feel comfortable to share and to share things that maybe they've never verbalized before, which is an important, you know, skill, as well as never verbalized in front of other people, which is really important for building community, because then those people can see like, oh, I'm not alone. Then it must be safe for me to also share my thing, you know, um, and then in doing that, what naturally can happen is we build on each other's responses. So just like we're having this meeting and session today, you know, every idea that's been shared, you know, pretty much somebody has added like, oh, I can apply that to this. And then, oh, well, then I can apply that to this and, and really expand it. So it really builds a community of ideas and resources in addition to the community of just, <clears throat> you know, folks uh, feeling like safe and secure enough with another person to share what might be intimate details. Do you want to go, Ziska? Oh, sure. I wasn't sure if I, sorry, this is my first fishbowl, so I wasn't sure if I needed to like wait until someone told me to say something. <laughs> like in a physical space, I think you kind of like get like maybe like do it with eye eye movements or something. Um, just for the purpose of like the experiment, I would say like, I've got my, my screen is like, I'm looking at the Google slide and then I have like a picture in picture of the Zoom. So right now I see Robin's face, um, just so you know, <laughs> kind of what I'm saying. Um, so what I'd say in terms of the prompt is, and it's funny cause Maria and I were talking about this in our introductions to each other. Um, but is to me, facilitation is a demonstration uh, of the alternative to kind of like top down leadership. Um, and it's like, it's, I think it's part of, you know, I think when people think about like figuring things out together, at least like if you grew up in like the Northeast of the US, like I did, um, it seems very pie in the sky and it seems like well you always need someone who's like smart to figure things out at the end of the day um and to like tell people what to do and to me facilitation is like it's like that missing key to like between like the chaos of people just like you know like nothing working because people can't figure out how to talk to each other or work through something or they get stuck in a conflict and like having to have some quote, benevolent dictator, right, <laughs> in like whatever form, um, or like representative, uh, make make sense of the world for us. And so to me, that's really how it changes the world. It's like it, um, or how it changes the world for me, I guess, is it, yeah, it gives me like this al alternate option where like people figure things out can work and, it, right, because like we can all we can all be facilitators in a room. We can all get better with our facilitating abilities. And these really are skills, right? That like people can learn. You don't need to have gone to like a fancy university to, to know it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, just the accessibility of facilitation. A, you know, you can learn certain models and use them and you can 
do that as someone who might not be intuitively great at facilitating. And then there's other people that are intuitively great at facilitating and holding space. And so there's this accessibility to uh, all the different ways and methods of holding space or being in relationship. And at the end of the day, the way I see facilitation changing the world, like you were saying, is um, because it just encourages collaboration and hearing as many voices as possible and asking who's not in the room when we need to. And um, you know, hold, holding a space that things are more possible than people knew of before. Like Meg said, you know, oh, oh, that was actually fun. How cool is that? I was actually dreading this day because I thought you were going to make me talk about my emotions. <laughs> um, and then I talked about my emotions and it was actually quite relieving. So, um, yeah. I, I also really like facilitation because what I can see in a space is, um, I mean, I, like, I'm looking at this space, so like a, a little bit of a step out into this activity that we're doing. I'm watching where people are in the room. So I'm trying to picture like Meg is over on this orange couch and Liz and Maria are like sitting next to each other, you know, so y'all can hang out and Gil, like maybe you're bouncing on the ball, you know, so I, I'm trying to figure out like, what does it feel like to be in a room? And to be honest, like I feel a little awkward in this moment because I'm the only one in the middle, but I'm kind of facing you all over here. So maybe someone can, oh, look, now people can come and come and join. Ah, yay! <laughs> um, so I, I'll, I'll shut up, but I'm just, I'm really excited to also pay attention. I think facilitation changes the world because we not only pay attention to the content, but we pay attention to the space. I wanted to put this in the chat, but because I wasn't in the middle, I didn't feel like I could uh, use the chat, right? <laughs> So I just wanted to um, second what you had said about what both of you had said about facilitation, um, bringing, you know, that the collaboration, like the sum is greater of the parts, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How like, and also like, we don't have to, you know, it's not about this big leader telling us what to do, but the fact that we can use the, you know, collective to come up with solutions that help the people that are there while also keeping in mind like who's not there. I just wanted to restate that because I thought that was really powerful. Gail, you're the only one left in the middle. Do you want to say something and then maybe we can do a little debrief and wrap up? Yeah, sure. I, I just, you know, I think everyone everyone shared was perfect, right? To me, facilitation is about the shared experience. And I, even just this right here, right? Facilitating this for us is a great example of that, right? Let's try something out and we all learn and take away from it and, um, and move forward. So thanks for sharing this. I like this activity. I also like um, the use of the, what is this Google? Is this a Jamboard or a document? Yeah. It's a it's, slide. It, a Google slide. Okay. Yeah. Google slide. Yeah. It's so, it's so simple. And I found a lot of times with this, a, the rapid shift to technology this last year, that sometimes like simpler or just using the tools we already know, it can sometimes be a lot more accessible than introducing a new tool. So some of the new tools I've learned have been amazing. And then with certain populations, it's a lot easier just to like, it might be a few more clicks or it might not be as smooth, but it actually works better because people are familiar with it. So I really appreciate that use of this tool that way. I also really like that y'all come in as anonymous, but then you write your name. So then I get to know like Maria is a grizzly. <laughs> did you want to say something, Maria? Or maybe yeah, actually I did. And um I I I just because uh I wouldn't do this in a normal in an other group, but in the facilitator group, I would like to um ask. So, uh, cause sometimes like I just envision like me doing this with the group of young people that I work with or adults for that matter. And some people just staying on the outside, um, circle and not entering in the circle. And I noticed, um, I believe it was Liz that did that. 
So, um, and Liz, there, you're, there's no pressure for you to answer, but I am curious, like, what is the, the sense of like staying on the outside circle? And is there a hesitation to being on the inside circle? And I'm only asking to help me to understand those in my groups that might be on the outside circle. And again, no pressure to answer. Yeah, I guess I can't I do a, am I supposed to enter the maybe middle? We, we could dissolve the fishbowl yeah. so we could maybe move into the debrief so we can like, uh, I, I'm going to close it. Otherwise, I'm going to be tempted to continue to, or like, I'm going to shift my attention back to Zoom. That way we can kind of like dissolve, I call it dissolving the fishbowl and like, um, yeah, so we can debrief and you don't have to keep moving in, Liz. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a combination of several things. I mean, I think one, like overall, I'm not having the greatest of days and I didn't know that I, like I was necessarily having anything to, to add that folks weren't, uh, already saying um but I definitely think in general I'm the type of participant that like yeah in, in terms of like make space take space step up step back or whatever you call it like I I tend to prefer to see like what's going on and where an activity is going um before jumping in and I get that this is an experiment and so maybe it wasn't going anywhere other than like let's just play with this tool um and yeah, like I've seen things that are similar, like where folks can, um, like what might you call it? Like the sociometry kind of things where maybe you might like ask a question and then ask folks to put themselves uh, closer to a, a word. Um, but yeah, for me, like, I don't, I don't know that the idea of like sitting on a Google slide couch made me feel like closer. Um, but I think it's the type of tool that like, if you use it in a certain way, like if then you start to, if like for me, I'm a theater practitioner as, as Meg figured out from my, <laughs> the background when I turned off my uh, camera. But if it's a type of thing to get people to start to think about, like think about how you usually sit. Do you sit straight on? Are you the type of person that sits cross-legged? Like, and then like, how, how do you wanna engage people's bodies? in thinking about space that way for me is is maybe a thing but like yeah I guess for me like there, there are other ways to have a fishbowl on zoom without going to that tool and so for me I was just waiting to find out I was like what 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 is this gonna unlock for me like why are we in the google slide um but that may just be my own like distance from it at this moment well, thank you for sharing that, Liz. And also thank you for staying on the outside circle so that it would prompt me to think about the question. <laughs> so I just wanted to share, like that really unlocked something for me, Liz, about the like using embodiment as a tool with this tool makes a lot of sense to me and makes it relevant versus just like you were saying, it's like, well, okay, what are we getting out of this? But yeah, can you imagine yourself how would you sit on a couch or how are you sitting now and really paying attention to your own body in this moment uh, instead of being ahead on a screen that that just gave me a new tool for it. So thank you for that. Yeah, I feel like online facilitation, there's this tension between like trying to recreate the real world in ways that make us just miss that we're not in person and then think about that because I think that's where my brain was going. I was just like, oh, but I'm I'm not on a yoga mat. <laughs> like I'm not on a bouncy ball like this bug. <laughs> Versus things that just embrace like, hey, we're in these squares. And isn't it fun that we're on these squares too? And so yeah, it's it's tricky. It I definitely noticed when I started relating to it more as a physical space. And that's when I put myself on the arm of the couch. Like I moved from like sitting on the couch and I was like, I wouldn't sit on the couch. I'd sit on the arm of the couch. And then I was like, yeah, that's much better. And like, I had to move into trying like, like kind of imagining the space more. Right. And I, and I agree with you that it, it can feel really unsatisfying um, the, the recreation of physical space and then the like reminder that we're not. And then I, I also have found it to be like, I, I expected this to feel like un, 
I'll be totally transparent. I expected this to feel unnecessary. Like I felt like we can just do this on Zoom with like cameras on, cameras off, which is how I've done it um, before. And it works really well. But I also, like the thing I'm thinking about is like, well, could I have, could I encourage people to like move from the chair, but not go in the circle so that they're standing on the, you know, those people who are like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to go in, I'm just going to stand, you know, I'm going to stand and we'll see if I, all, if I make it all the way there. And so like encourage people to like edge towards the circle. I think if you have a big group of people, like that might be really helpful um, versus just camera on camera off, which is like a switch versus like a dimmer. That's something I was thinking about. Like if you if you filled this room with 20 people, I can see this being worth doing versus like, I'm just gonna do a six person fishbowl. We're not really gonna move in and out that much or it's just gonna like the on off switch is enough. So I think there, I think there is a good use for this Robin and I, I'm glad we did it. Um, and I do think that there's some more like getting people to really put themselves in the space and try to be like, but like, would you sit on a bouncy ball or would you sit on a yoga mat? Like choose the one you really would do, you know, like even that kind of simple thing might, might um, invite them or like be that person who's like, yeah, I stand in the back so I can leave anytime, you know, like, or I'm just gonna, I'm actually just gonna like, I'm that person who's going to get a snack during these because I never want to participate, you know, something like that might. Um, we can add a snack table. Yeah. I was thinking that this activity could also be um, like instead of like instead of using it for the goldfish bowl, like you could have kind of like the climb. I don't want to say climax cards. The climber, climber. cards. Mm -hmm. The climber cards um, is like a low tech version, and just have like maybe you know nine squares, and then have people put their name, you know, and have them move around to different squares. Um, I haven't fully thought this out yet, but just as you were talking about different uh, environments that it could be used in. I was thinking that would be something that would be kind of cool too, you know, that socio geometry, um, socio sociometry, excuse me, sociometry, uh, kind of using that and this in the same, like kind of marrying the two. Yeah, there's like an Instagram meme. I mean, I don't, I don't know for folks that are either live in New York or have lived in New York and then it's got these subway seats and they're numbered and it's like, which, which one is the ideal seat to be in? <laughs> and then people in the comments are like, no, like you always wanna be in that corner seat in case you need it or like whatever it is. And so how can this have a, a similar vibe of like, why is that the best seat on this Google slide and start to you know get people chatting about why you would sit there in a meeting or at a party or what, whatever you're facilitating. You can also use it to move to like a topic for a breakout room. So like have all the topics and say, this is where I want to go. And then the facilitator can use that to guide how you split people into breakouts. Yeah, I found somebody, somebody introduced that in a brain jam and they didn't even do a Google slide. The, the person actually like held up a physical map that they drew and said like room one is this kind of room. Like room one is like quiet reading by yourself room. You know, room two is the like chatty Cathy's and room three is people who like want to kind of co-work but like an occasional question but not. And then you just opted into which room you wanted. And I found, I, I did that in a brain jam where I just like put up the map and I, I had the different room numbers. And I thought that was so much easier or it went much smoother than putting like, room one in the chat is this like people have this ability I think to visualize spaces in a different way than just like retaining words on a page um and so I think the and and I really think that that like inspired me from gather which I love that we're transitioning over to gather in a minute because gather like made it to me like wholly possible that you can actually have a space that really feels like we're in in physical space together much more than th this does but I felt inspired by that to like try some more of those elements like I'm going to draw a map rather than uh rather than just put everything in the chat and I think that worked um so yeah maybe that's new other ways we can use this kind of physical inspiration all right um, thanks Robin thanks for leading us in that experiment um oh Zuska yeah I was going to ask, and uh, totally feel free to shut me down on this. I was going to um, 
suggest like if people wanted to see like a cozy room for a second because and and honestly like I would just like time box it to like two minutes but just to see like what it looks like because I liked that it kind of if you haven't seen it before it's kind of interesting in that like you're a little um circle that has eyes <laughs> and you can actually see where you're looking so you can like look at people while they're talking um and if you like, I, I created one really quickly. So if you wanted to jump into the one, we could do that. Or I could just say, cozy room and you can check it out yourself. <laughs> let's do, let's do like no more than five minutes and then we'll have 20 minutes to spend in Gil's space. Okay. Okay. So I'm putting the, the link in the chat right now. You will probably want to mute here in Zoom and might even need to close and then opening like cozy room. So just make sure you're muted in this space before you open up cozy room. So I'm talking in Zoom right now um, because I can't hear in cozy room. And I wonder if it's because people's mics are still like being taken up by um, Zoom potentially. I can see that cozy room is taking my audio because my little mouth is moving. I can see Robin's talking, Gil is talking. So maybe they can hear each other. <laughs> Yes. I can hear you through Zoom, but not Cozy Room. I can't hear anyone in Cozy Room. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe um, maybe we can talk in Zoom and keep the audio on there. It doesn't seem like it's creating um, any kind of feedback. But um, for those of you who can hear me in Zoom, <laughs> this is it. This is Cozy Room. And as you like move your little uh, cursor around you will look at different things and there are lots of different objects that you can put in um, in cozy room so maybe we want a fire instead of this very tiny table I think this table is very very cute but it's also very small oh sorry I didn't mean to set Tracy on fire uh, sorry Tracy Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I, I didn't realize other people can move them too. I don't know if you have um, options to like add objects, they would be in like the bottom left. I don't know if you have to be like the room host in order to do that. Oh yeah, you do not. And I love it. <laughs> yeah. Get some more trees, get a nice rug in there. If you right click an object, you can also like flip it or rotate it or delete it. But I think the, um, yeah, the, the thing is like, you can like really be like, I can sit right next to Maria. <laughs> oh, we're right next to each other now. Now I can sit on the log with Gil. Nice. Maria found the chat. Okay, I'm going to invite everyone back to Zoom. So I think any trippiness that ex you experienced there or double echo um, or any of that was 100% because we were doing both at once. Me and Zuzia have done this and it uh, it works pretty flawlessly. I do find the like little moving mouth to be absolutely entrancing. 
um, and the fact that you can direct your eyes. It's also a proximity chat. So if people are far enough away from each other, you can't hear them anymore, which we're going to experience in, in Gather as well. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. Like when you do break, you could do breakout rooms as long as they're far enough away from each other um, and you can kind of like walk over to someone. So it's, it's, it's a really cool kind of low, very low tech uh, uh, proximity chat, unlike what we're about to head into in Gather. So I know, I know Zuska has been in Gather. I know Maria has been in Gather. Liz and Robin, is this going to be your first times in Gather? Yeah, I mean, I, I do VR stuff, but okay. I then Gather. This is more like 16-bit <laughs> than uh, oh, like, okay. it's going to feel like we're in an old Zelda video game. Um, and uh, I don't know if it works well on phones, Maria, but I do know that Tracy, who's the iPhone, uh, was in there. So um, Tracy, if you wanna, if you wanna throw in the, in the Zoom chat uh, how it worked for you, you could do that. Um, I do think that we are going to probably close out in Gather. And so we'll, we'll once Gil has us oriented and, and gets us set up, we'll all just move over to Gather. Um, hi, Tracy. <laughs> do you wanna fill us in like a, how did it work on, on your phone? Um, it worked flawlessly. I was like, oh, wow, I like this. This is, this was cute. I really like that. It was fun. Also a great way to engage the learners and, um, just, just a fun activity. I was like, oh, never heard of this before. It is quite cozy. Beautiful. So Tracy, I will say we will lose you if you aren't able to come to a computer right now because Gather doesn't work or it just like is very clunkily supported on mobile. Um, so if if you're not able to, to join us, thank you for being here and for chiming in uh, last minute. If you are, uh, the link is going to come in there in a minute. Um, if I do get lost, I just want to say really quick, all of you guys are fantastic. I found this. Uh, Zoom course just by accident, and I'm so happy that I found it. I will definitely be joining. And all of the information you guys have provided was just like, oh my God, this this is my tribe. These are my people. Yay. Yes. So uh, thank you guys. Very nice to hear from everyone. Hopefully, I'll see you in the future. But if I get lost in there, I'll see you again. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, Tracy. Um, if if you want, um, I will send you. Um, if, if it would be helpful to transfer over to your computer, please let me know and I can send you like an email with the link rather than having to like figure out how to get it over there. Uh, so just throw that in the chat if that's gonna be helpful. Okay, Gil, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Um, and uh, awesome. and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna head into your, into your world. Yeah, cool. Well, this is perfect because just all this conversation around how do we work in space together virtually, it's like, well, we just did one activity and now we can try another way and, and see what you think of it. So um, I put the link in the chat and I believe if you click on it, it should just take you there. I, I removed the password, so it should just let you in. Um, once you get there, you may get a little prompt screen. There's an option to put a little tutorial in the beginning. I turned it off because I thought a few folks might be there. It's really easy to learn. So um, hopefully once you log in, um, it might ask for your name. You get to pick your little avatar and you can change their, their look and their clothing and their colors and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. And then it should drop you into the space. You will either drop into the room or right outside our front door, which looks like a nice garden space. And if so, um, there's some arrows and directions pointing you down. You just use the arrow buttons on your keyboard, like right, left, down, up, down. Um, and it will walk your character around and try to come to the front door and come on inside and we'll meet you there. Um, so I don't know, maybe if I should, should I share my screen to show you what it's gonna look like or should we just pop over there? Let me try to share this really quick. If you're in, you can go ahead and close Zoom. If you're still confused, you can stay for this little yeah. mini tutorial. So this is the room, this is what it's gonna look like. And uh, out here, it may drop you out here and you just, there's some arrows that say, just walk in the door and you'll see us here and we're all gonna gather in here. And once we're in there, um, when you walk close to somebody, your little video screen will pop up and we can start chatting. So you'll, uh, if you turn your audio on, you can hear each other and you can see video and you can walk around a little bit. Um, so feel free to, to mingle a little bit. Maybe don't go around the entire house. We'll do a tour together um, and we'll go from there. So I'm gonna, I can't seem to screen share and be in the space at the same time. So I'm gonna stop sharing now and go into gather space so I can greet you all. As you'll see, if you wander around, feel free to wander around and you'll see that your video will change who you see, right? And then, um, and you can chat with the people that you can see on your screen, which is kind of fun. So what this is, so this is, um, I call this our Titan house. And 
Uh, this is for a teen youth leadership program that I do. The Titans are a group of trans youth who take action now. So it's trans youth taking action now. This is their Titan house. And normally when we kick off a cohort group, we meet for about a year and we'll do a big retreat and we'll, we'll spend like a weekend in a house somewhere or oftentimes we'll, we'll meet at a conference that we do. And this, so the youth are used to having a space where they can run around and be in space with each other for like three full days. Um, and that's really how they bond and connect. And then they have this connection that takes them through the whole year. So this year when we couldn't do that physically because of COVID, we were really bummed. And we were already getting really burnt out on Zoom. Um, they're all in virtual school. And so that was a lot. And so uh, it was pretty cool. I came to this cool brain jam and they introduced us together. And I'm like, ooh, I have an idea. And so um, I learned, jumped in the gather sort of learned how to do a few things and built out this space for us. And so this is sort of our clubhouse. And so we'll now do our youth group meetings in here. And so um, when folks come in, um, the first time they did it, we did a quick little orientation to show them how to move around. Um, and then we did a, like a tour of the space. And so um, one or two things to know, and then we can wander a bit, is there's some spaces are called private spaces. And you'll see a green rug over on the left, and that's a big private space. When you're on there, no matter where you are, you can hear all the other people that are in that space. So why don't we walk over to the green rug right now, and we can uh, take a look at that. So if you can walk onto the green rug, it's the upper left side of the, the house or the screen there. And I'm going to move there now, too. Cool. And I see, can you guys still hear me? Hopefully. I think Zuka is still outside. I'm not sure if there. There we go. Is this where you awesome. do your meetings? Yep, this is where we do our meetings. Yeah, so we'll usually say when you guys get in, like, you know, they'll hang out and chat with each other for a bit more, and then I'll say we're ready to start, and everybody comes to the green space. And so they'll, you know, they sit on these little cushions or the chairs. And we've got, there's objects. So, like, if you stand there, an apple or anything, I think that's vegetation, has little notes. And we put in little tips for how to navigate the space, like, hey, you can do this or that. Um, and so those are interactive. So when you walk up to something, if it highlights like one of these apples, you can press X and it'll give you a little note. I mean, there's some tips there. So there's ways to follow people. Like if you want to just follow somebody around, um, there's, let's see here. You can just, on the bottom of the toolbar, uh, you can see who else is here. So on the bottom left, there's some menu options. One is participants. So you can see there are participants. There's a chat over there on the left, right? Which is pretty cool. Um, and so we'll do this, and then what we'll do is we'll break up and we'll say, hey, guys, like, we need to brainstorm for our activity we're doing next week. Um, let's split the groups, and we'll just divvy them up and say, okay, go find a space somewhere in the house and go meet with your group and chat. And so there's all sorts of spaces. You'll see just down below there's some couches. There's a snack bar area. We made a little, like, I don't know, like a kitchen diner, kind of Starbucks or something, um, and they can go over there. And then all throughout the house there's, like, some games they can play. Um, and there's little activities they can engage in. And so they can just go explore and like click on objects and they take you out. And I've sort of linked to some fun games. Um, there's a cool music radio station from around the world from across time. There's some fun Google map activities and stuff like that. Um, so one of the activities I wanted to show that we did was how we did our first round of group intros. In advance, we sent everybody a link to a Google slide and we asked them to create their own about me slide. Um, and we created a gallery walk. And so Let's do this really quick. If you can go on the bottom left of your screen, it says participants, and you should see everyone's name. And if you click on me, I think there's a way to follow. And I'm not seeing it now. Maybe I don't know if you remember how to follow, but it's you for won't, some reason. It's you won't see it on yourself, Gil. So we'll it's, it on okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I was like, why don't I see it? If you click on me and select follow, um, I'll walk and I'll give you a little tour of the house. How about that? Okay, so um, go ahead and click on me, and then I see... We're just going to walk around here. And it says press X to interact, and you can do that, and you'll see we've got our announcement board here, and this is just Google Slides, and down at the bottom left, you can click to go through the slides, click back here for updates, right? Um, and then there's a little X in the upper right to exit out of there. And then next to that, we've got another little board, and this one, how I did it was I linked out to Google Slides. It's Interesting how you have to embed things differently. Sometimes you can do a direct link, and sometimes I just did it on a Google slide. So on this one, I did a slide just because I wanted a fun picture, and I think that's where we talk. And this is a fun little um, document. I'm going to ask you guys not to type on this because this is actually live, and we'll leave notes for everybody. They'll be like, why would people in our house? <laughs> um, but we can leave notes for each other. Um, so if people come to visit, if the teams come hang out, they'll leave notes for each other, which is kind of fun. It, this one does take you out to a different uh, window in your internet browser, so you may need to click back over. 
And then we've got a little calendar over here so they can remember when the next meeting is. Over on the right here, you guys are dragging on. These are all private. to hear um, but so you have to use it cautiously because like Meg and Marie at first weren't in there and I forgot they can't hear me when we move into private space yeah um, this is a fun little piano if you click X um, I believe it should activate and we can actually play music with other people it's just a fun little internet room that we linked out to Let's see if this pops up here we go and so we can kind of play together oh yeah and the, one of the things I love is that we all pop up as these anonymous people, like someone's a fox. I think I'm a squid. <laughs> so it's kind of interactive and fun. Nice. Ooh, someone's musical here. I like that. And you can change this to be something else. You can go back to the 80s. <laughs> So I'm going to walk down and um, in a minute, I may blank out because we're leaving the private space, but we should all group up together in just a second. Oh, I need you guys to slide there. You guys can... Awesome. These are the restrooms. If anyone needs a restroom while we're doing our tour, you can hit X and you'll, you'll see the restrooms there. We tried to make this like our conference space. The, the youth, there was some area, this alcove, like a dead end hallway by the restrooms and they all hang out there all the time. So we tried to recreate that here. And then over here, um, who needs that? Let's see if Liz can move a little bit. You sort of, we do kind of block each other in. A These little globes link out to fun little like Google Map app. Um, you can check them out if you want. Some of them are like guess your location. Some of them are just explore the world. It'll take you like to the savannah or somewhere. If you get stuck, you can hold down G and you become a temporary ghost and you can move through people. Thank you. I knew there was a trick to that. <laughs> We're always trapping each other and we sort of do it on purpose sometimes. Uh, but these are all just kind of cool, like, images and stuff you can go to. There is another one where you have to guess your location. So I just put these fun little map activities for them to do. And then kind of check them out if you want to see what they look like. Uh, the City Guesser is really fun. It just gives you an image, and sometimes it's really famous, like the Statue of Liberty, and sometimes it's not, and you have to guess where you are. And sometimes you can, like, look at the street signs to try to guess what language they're in to see if you can figure out what country or city you're in, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's not that there. And then if we come to these that I blanked out with a placeholder slide for folks who maybe are less public just since we were doing the share. Um, but you can walk up to mine. There's Carmel and Simon. I think they've all got something hidden. And if you hit an X, it'll pop up one of those PowerPoint slides where they do an about me. And when we first met, we would walk each other through it and somebody would explain their slides and why they chose what they did. But we left it open so that you can always add more. But like we've got one youth who's a musician, so they put up a video about themselves and it's just on the PowerPoint slide and it links out to one of their other band playing music. Um, and it was just a really fun way to do a get to know me of folks. And so you're welcome to kind of walk through a couple of these. These are just whiteboards um, objects and I just added a link to them to link out to Google. And again, you just click next. Yeah. Any Sorry, Gil. So um, it won't let me see the Google Slides because I don't have access. So do you have oh. like, do you have it shared or is anybody else experienced? It should be shared. I was messing with it beforehand. Did you try, maybe try another person's. Can anyone else see one? Like, I saw Gills. You can yeah, see Gills, but, but maybe not others. The others might, I might not have shared them correctly. Um, Aiden's them. might work, I think. There were a couple where I had to um, keep them private. Oh, yeah. I can't yeah. Yeah. Gills works. Okay, yeah, mine works if you want to see what it looks like. There's, a, there's a Kermit the Frog video on there. Yeah, there is a fun one. It's, Aww. It's, okay. it's, uh, what is it called? It's the drop the mic. It's some kind of comedy thing. It's quite cute. But, uh, it's a little bit long. <laughs> but yeah, so we just threw stuff on there. And when I've worked at camps in the past, Kermit's my camp name, so I threw that there's a little um, And then in past years, we've done, we've had mentors. And so we have like an alumni one and we were putting photos up. That's just a placeholder right now because there's some folks who maybe can put their picture 
shared in this format. But um, but it was just a fun way. So we've kind of created this space where we've got like a history of people who've been here, who's here now. Um, we'll invite alumni back for special events, and they can come in the house and join us, and then they get to see that like they're a part of the space as well, which is quite kind of cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, as we go down a little bit. And so these are all built in together. You can walk up to any of them and, connect, and they take you out to video games somewhere in Gabby and Gabber and stuff take you out to websites. Um, so for, especially for youth who are really into gaming, we'll give them free time and they're welcome to come hang out of the space on their own um, outside of our meeting hours. And this just gives them a place to come and hang out and engage with each other. That's a little more interactive. Kind of fun. Um, okay, so we're gonna keep uh, in the gaming space. about why I like being fun because it's just fun for the kids to watch and we can change up the videos from time to time and come watch. Oh shoot. Do a little dance and they make little like emojis and stuff, which is really fun. Hey Gil. Or chatting even people who need to fidget, they can just hit Z on their keyboard and kind of dance and move around which works really well, I think, for our youth being in this space, as opposed to being on Zoom where you're just sort of stuck staring at the screen. We can kind of bounce to like, you can see people, but also move. And then this radio is super cool. This is another fun web link. You can go play a radio station from like any country from any point in time that they have on record. So you can go to Peru in the 1920s and see what the music was playing on the radio and they'll play that type of music. Um, hey, so that was really fun for the kids. Gil, would it be cool if we did just like a quick like circle up and then yeah. if people want to keep exploring, they can? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so that's pretty much, and we're pretty close to done too. The rest is just um, a couple of spaces to hang out. There's a life in the space over here. We can circle up right here, and just to be chill. Can we? Can we and maybe we, close out in the Zen Garden? Yeah, totally. Let's go. Very good book that would be familiar to Meg that we linked out to. It's right above the Zen Garden later. If you guys want to explore this little library, if you want to learn more about the magic of facilitation. <laughs> Um, um, and then you can unfollow me if you want to be a little more free to move. I think you just click up on me and the participants on the left, and I think you can unfollow. Thank you all for If you move your keys, it'll also stop. Um, oh, awesome. So just because we're coming up on time, and I want to respect if anybody needs to jump off right at the two. Um, uh, oh, yeah, you can actually stand in the Zen Garden. Let's do that so that we're close together. Um, and then if we're all close enough together, up in the top right where you see people's videos, if you hit the arrow keys, it will expand so that we can all see each other simultaneously. Um, so Gil, that was a, this is an incredible house. I'm so impressed. Um, it's fun. So fun. Um, I will also do a quick uh, share that like we're, I'm experimenting with doing facilitator cards office hours on Gather. So we have like a digital office, very much inspired by Gil's idea of like, I want to have a calendar and I want to have like a suggestion box and, um, and all of those things exist. So if you're curious, uh, every Monday I'll be hanging out in the uh, facilitator cards, digital office. Um, but I, I just wanted to first give a huge shout out to everybody who led an experiment during the playground. Thank you so much for doing that or a tour. Um, that was really cool. And I feel like we engage with like so many different digital technologies. Gather is by far one of my favorites, even though I don't use it as much as I'd like to, um, just because I think it it really um, feels a little more immersive. And I know as we're heading back into like uh, into in person facilitations, I have some of those on my calendar for the first time in a year and a half, which is absolutely wild. And I'm really interested to see like how do we um, how do we go into this world of hybrid? Do these spaces continue to exist? It, do we continue to realize like, oh my gosh, we can like serve youth from, you know, who are way out there and who could never come into Seattle or, um, or into another space because they're able to access this space together. I think that's incredibly powerful. So I just want to give a big shout out to everybody who was here and who was experimenting. Yay. Um, thank you so much everyone for coming to our July Brain Jam. Please look out for an email about the next one. 
Um, and I'll do a follow up with all of the links from the Zoom. Um, if there's anything that you're like, oh, I didn't get to share this, but I just wanted to add, I can throw it into the email um, that I'll do as a follow up. And then I tried my best. I don't know if it's going to work. Fingers crossed to film this um, just with a screen recording because you can't automatically film in Gather. Um, and I'll double check with you, Gil, on that. But if it worked, um, and if not, the, the Zoom that we were in will be posted on the Soul Theater Cards YouTube channel in case you want to like relive all of this glory um, or share it with other people. So I will close us out um, and just say thank you all so much for being here. It sounds like, Gil, is it okay if people keep exploring if they want to keep exploring? Cool. You're muted. At least to me site but the google docs do link out to our live ones so if you just don't change any document but you can play the games and stuff it's fun awesome and uh yeah thanks for coming everyone and uh, i'll stick around i'm gonna i'm gonna hang out and uh explore a little more so if anybody wants to chat i'm happy to do that for a little bit otherwise have a great rest of your day your evening your night and uh, we'll see you see you again soon awesome thanks everybody Bye.